Hello friends, in this video, we are going to discuss about problems in BCBR course. Firstly, I want to thank all the viewers who had made this high yield topics of BCBR course video great success and followed by that I have made part 2 also and that also has received a huge support from all of you. After seeing these two parts and writing the exams, many of the students has given the feedback that, that most of the questions asked in this BCBR course are problems. So they mentioned that they had a little tough time with their exams. In the part 1 and part 2, I have mentioned here and there few formulas related to the problems. This video is going to be exclusively for problems in your BCBR course. Basically, your BCBR course consists of 25 lectures. In that, we have problems in 4th lecture, 6th le lecture, 10th lecture and 12th lecture. We will see the formulas clearly. Some of the problems I can explain with examples. For the time being, we will see only the formulas and its proper understanding and how to apply it correctly. And where all you will make mistakes that will be discussed. So, this fourth lecture is measures of dishes frequency where we will focus on incidence and prevalence. Sixth lecture is analytical study designs where we focus on odds ratio and relative risk. The tenth chapter is the measurement of the study variables where we deal with measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion that is mean median mode and here standard deviation coefficient of variation mean deviation variance etc and in the 12th lecture we deal with sample size calculation so sample size calculation will be again divided into calculation of sample size for prevalence for a single group and mean for a single group that is here we will look at some of the proportions or percentage here we will look at some of the numbers suppose we are studying hemoglobin as a parameter prevalence of anemia means that will come under prevalence so this is for the single group and for two group also we will see two group prevalence and two group means this is the entire set of problems mentioned in your bcbr course and we are going to see this one by one the formulas the subdivisions all the parameters we are going to see first let me start off with the incidence and prevalence that is the fourth chapter measures of disease frequency usually measures of disease morbidity or the suffering of a disease will be calculated in terms of frequency disability and severity for severity we use this case fatality rate which they have not given in the problem in bcbr course but you need to know because they have mentioned in the slide so cfr that is case fatality rate is total number of deaths due to the disease divided by total number of cases we usually it will be expressed in percentage so multiplication factor will be 100 that is the cfr for the this is severity disability will be disability rates which you need to understand but here they have not mentioned in the course but the frequency the parameters of disease frequency is incidence and prevalence under incidence we have two components that is cumulative incidence and incidence density for prevalence we have point prevalence and we have period prevalence so formulas for this we should know we all know incidence and prevalence both are rates rates means always the parameter will be in relationship to the time so values will be mentioned specific to your time period incidence rate will be having new cases in the numerator and total population in the denominator prevalence means old and new cases divided by total population but here to be precise under incidence we have cumulative incidence cumulative in the incidence which is which is otherwise called as attack rate so which is mentioned by the population at risk which means you should exclude the the person who will not get the disease should be excluded either they will be vaccinated or they, they would have got the disease and recovered and they are immune to the disease so that will be in the population at risk and total number of new cases will be the in the time period will be the cumulative incidence usually expressed in percentage then the next incidence is incidence density which is otherwise called as incidence rate simply but in other standard textbooks incidence rate will be like this but in this course they have specifically mentioned incidence density as incidence rate so you need to remember like that only and then here the, the denominator is the person and time suppose if we are following 100 person for two years then which means the denominator will become 200 instead of 100 person it will become 200 because we have followed them for two years so this is called as person time so number of person into time usually expressed in years and the total number of new cases during that period will be considered as incidence density this is incidence rate there is there is one more special incidence rate which they have not mentioned but you need to know that is called as secondary attack rate the difference between the attack rate and the secondary attack rate is the denominator is population at risk but within one incubation period 
but within one incubation period time how many cases are developed so that is after the exposure to the primary case how many cases are developed so that will become the secondary attack rate so we call this secondary attack rate is the spreading power of the disease or the infective power of the disease on the other hand this cfr or the case fatality rate is considered as the killing power of the disease or severity parameter of disease then we are moving to the prevalence parameters that is point prevalence and period prevalence we all know the point prevalence is like a snapshot at some point of time at the beginning of the year how many cases are there so the denominator will be again population at risk and total number of old and new cases at that point of time is called as point prevalence whereas the period prevalence is the total number of old and new cases during the period population at risk during the particular period will be considered as period prevalence suppose we have this as a two time intervals there is one case at this point of time it is getting cured there is one case here one point it is getting cured there is one case it is getting cured there is one case it is getting cured there is one case it is getting cured so if we get cases like this so the point prevalence here will be considered as two point prevalence here it will be considered as at this end of this observation will be considered as 2 at the same time the period prevalence you need to include this case this case and this case this case this case so period prevalence includes 5 so likewise you should include all the cases which happened during that time and also the old cases which is already existing for period prevalence calculation so to sum up with the disease frequency we have seen incidence and prevalence under incidence we have cumulative incidence or attack rates incidence density or incidence rate and we have seen secondary attack rate also under prevalence we have point prevalence and period prevalence now we move on to the next lecture that is the analytical study design or the sixth lecture where we are going to have this odds ratio and relative risk in the previous videos of mine i would have mentioned it clearly i repeat here the basic essential for analysis of this study design is the construction of the two bar two table or the contingency table the basic rule for this the construction of the con contingency table is that always you should make the outcome on the top so outcome should be in the top or the disease outcome or the disease should be in the top and the risk factor which you are studying should be in the left side so this is the first rule outcome should be on the top then the second rule is always be positive which means always put the presence presence of the disease first absence of the disease next presence of the risk factor first absence of the risk factor next then for calculation purpose you should put a b c d it is not a b c d it is actually a b c d that you need to understand so this is the exposed or the a plus b this is unexposed or c plus d this is this is or a plus c and this is healthy that is b plus d and the total will be a plus b plus c plus d so we have constructed the two bar two table like this for both case control study and covert study the table remains the same the outcome will be in the top positive negative positive negative a b c d now odds ratio is given by the formula a d by b c a d by b c or the cross product ratio it is otherwise called as cross product ratio a d divided by b c b c you can remember by uh, the mnemonic after death divided by before christ you all know the interpretation of odds ratio equal to 1 no relationship less than 1 negative or protective relationship more than 1 you have positive relationship and odds ratio is used in case control study in case control study we can calculate the exposure rates also the exposure rates among the disease and the exposure rates among the and this is we can calculate but that is not very important but how you can calculate is this is the smokers so a by a plus c will be the exposure rates that is among the disease how many are exposed and among the healthy how many are ex exposed so this is exposure rates that is for the case control study when it comes to the cohort study we use this relative risk so before calculating the relative risk we should know about the incidence covert studies otherwise called as incidence study it is given by the formula so incidence among we can calculate incidence among the exposed and incidence among the unexposed here in this example you can see who are exposed is a by b a by b are exposed so who are all diseased is a by a plus b is exposed same way who are all unexposed is c by c plus d so who are all diseased is c by c plus d so this is the incidence among exposed that is a by a plus b incidence among the unexposed is c by c plus d so relative risk is given by the formula incidence among the exposed divided by incidence among the unexposed that is a by a plus b divided by c plus c plus c plus d we can also calculate attributable risk and population attributable risk which is not given in the bcbr course but you can also you can know sometimes they will ask that also which is given by the formula incidence of exposed minus incidence among unexposed divided by incidence among exposed population attributable risk is given by incidence among the population minus incidence among the 
unexposed divided by incidence among the population. So basically what is the interpretation of this attributable risk and population attributable risk? Relative risk, we all know it is relative risk. So the exposed are how much having the higher risk is the relative risk. Compared to the non-smokers, how much smokers have higher chance of acquiring the lung cancer is the relative risk. Same way, attributable risk means how out of the total lung cancer cases, how many are attributed to the smoking will be attributable risk. Population attributable risk is when we remove the smoking from the community, how many lung cancer cases will be actually reduced will be population attributable risk. So with this we have come at the end of the analytical study designs where we have seen about case control study and cohort study where the analysis parameters are odds ratio and relative risk respectively. So now we move on to the measures of variables that is the 10th lecture measures of variable where we have measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. First we will finish up the measures of central tendency for any numerical variable we use this measures of central tendency and dispersion. So central tendency we have mean, median and mode. Mean is nothing but the average which we have, we can calculate by sum of all observations divided by total number of observations. So you need to total all the observations divided by the total number of observations will give the average. So that is the average or otherwise called as arithmetic mean. We have median, you need to arrange all the values in ascending order or descending order. Then you need to select the middle value. To select the middle value, if you are dealing with odd number of values, then you, you need to calculate it by n plus 1 by 2th value. And if you are dealing with even number of values, then you need to take the average between n by 2th value and n plus 1 by 2th value. So you need to take the average of these two values. So basically, if you are dealing with 15, then you apply this 15 plus 1 by 2. So 8 value will be lower median value. Same way, if you are dealing with 10 number of observations, then you need to calculate n by 2. That is the average of 5th value and 6th value will be considered as the median. Then we have mode. Mode is otherwise called as repeated values. When we are arranging the ascending order or descending order, you can identify the most repeated value, the mode. So that is how you should calculate the measures of central tendency mean, median and mode. We move on to the measures of dispersion where we have range. Range is given by the formula maximum value minus minimum value. We have interquartile range that is the difference between the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile and for problems only range calculations will be there. Then we have to see what is variance, what is standard deviation, what is coefficient of variation, what is mean deviation. Before dealing that I will look at or I will explain how to do this standard deviation. So standard deviation is given by the formula root of x minus x bar the whole square divided by n. So let's say we have got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 as the values of hemoglobin. If you are asked to find out the standard deviation, I would ask you to put a table with serial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the values 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So the, here the x bar is will be 11. So the mean will be 11. So x minus x bar you need to calculate. So you will get minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. Then we need to look at, we have to square it. So x minus x bar, the whole square. So 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So you need to sum it up. If you sum it up, then it will become sigma x minus x bar, the whole square. And if you divide it by n, that is called as variance. And if you take a square root of this, it will become standard deviation. And when you take the sum of these values, this is called as, this is the mean and this is the deviation from the mean and the sum of these values divided by n. That is sigma x minus x bar divided by n is the mean deviation. We also should know about coefficient of variation formula that is given by the standard deviation divided by mean. For measurement of the variables, we have seen measures of central tendency and dispersion. Measures of central tendency is mean, median and mode which are very simple to calculate and for dispersion we have range and interquartile range. For standard deviation the formula is root of x minus x bar the whole square divided by n. So hence it is called as root mean square deviation. So it is the root of square of mean deviation and mean deviation is given by the formula sigma x minus x bar divided by n and coefficient of variation is given by standard deviation divided by mean. So whenever you are asked to calculate the coefficient of variation if standard deviation is given, you need to divide it with mean to get this coefficient of variation. Standard deviation is not given, the values are given, then you need to calculate the standard deviation and you need to calculate the coefficient of variation. So these only these parameters are given in the BCBA course. Now we move on to the 
last part that is the calculation of sample size here in this course what is described is sample size calculation of mean among a single group and sample size calculation for the prevalence of single group the sample size calculation for the mean between two groups is not mentioned sample size calculation for comparison of prevalence is given so for this the formula is sample size calculation of the mean that is when you are studying hemoglobin as a parameter numerical variable as a parameter of your study mean when you are looking at the mean of a parameter then you need to apply this formula for sample size calculation that is the total sample size n is given by z square sigma square divided by d square where z is a constant value it is called a standard normal deviate z value is 1.96 and z square is 3.84 some people will make it as instead of 3.84 they will make it as 4 also but to be accurate you have to make it as 3.84 sigma is nothing but the standard deviation sigma is nothing but the standard deviation so standard deviation you need to substitute and d is the precision d is the precision that is how, how much your study value will be deviated from the truth so that is called as precision or it is the allowable error by increasing this d value your sample size will be decreased and by decreasing the sample precision you increase the sample size that is as much as your allowable error precision value or the allowable error is reduced the sample size increases as much as the precision or the allowable error is increased the sample size decreases so in most of the times this value will be mentioned so you take this precision or if they are not giving the precision you can decide on the precision what you need to look at in the problem is you need to look at the standard deviation only they would have given mean standard deviation and other parameters from the previous study but what you need to look at is the standard deviation for the sample cal sample size calculation because z square is always going to be constant and that standard deviation will be substituted here then d will be decided by you and the sample size will either increase or decrease so you need to substitute let's suppose let's you are finding the mean hemoglobin the standard deviation of the uh, mean hemoglobin is 2 then you need to substitute 2 here suppose let's say if you are taking 0.1 so 0.1 square will become 0 0.01 so that will go above so 384 into 2 that will be the sample size for this example now we move on to the sample size for the prevalence that is you are looking at you are not looking at the mean hemoglobin levels in the group you are going to look at the prevalence of anemia in that group so in that case you should use the formula similar to this only it will be n is equal to z square p q divided by d square p q means p is nothing but the prevalence q is 100 minus p and d as i told it's the allowable error or precision and when i say precision you need to understand there are two types of precision that is called as absolute precision and relative precision absolute means when somebody says absolute precision of 5 percentage then you put the 5 percentage directly substitute the 5 percentage as it is when somebody says relative precision of 10 percentage which means relative precision of 10 percentage or 20 percentage which it means it is the 10 percentage of your prevalence suppose let's say here you are taking prevalence as 40 percentage then relative precision of 10 percentage means you have to take 10 percent of this is 40 which means your actual precision value to be substituted should be 4 percentage so you will substitute 4 percentage here and here it will be 60 again z square will be 3.84 so likewise you will calculate so i said prevalence is 40 100 minus p is q so it will become 60 i said relative precision is 4 percent 10 percentage of 40 so 4 percentage square so that that will be the sample size required so you can calculate this way so what in, in any question if they have given the sample size calculation for the prevalence of a proportion or percentage then you need to look at the the prevalence of the disease from the prevalence you substitute the formula here p directly q is 100 minus p and the precision is what you are going to decide when it comes to the real time situation but for calculation of the sample size you have to go with either absolute or relative precision absolute precision if they have given means then you have to substitute that precision value directly here relative precision means it is mean, means that the value is relative to the prevalence you need to substitute the values as we have told here so that is the sample size calculation for means and sample size calculation for proportions when we are calculating the sample size we should also know about the design effect it is the error which is obtained as the result of the sampling error you need to multiply the design effect with the calculated sample size if the calculated sample size is n then the actual sample size will be n into design effect the value of design effect usually ranges between 
1 to 2. If suppose they give 1.5 as the design effect, what you need to do is, you need to multiply that 1.5 with the actual sample size because they have mentioned about design effect i am mentioning this in this presentation now luckily they have not mentioned about sample size calculation of means between two groups but they have mentioned the sample size calculation of prevalence that is sample size calculation of proportion between two groups for that the formula is n is equal to p0 q0 plus p1 q1 into z square alpha 1 by 2 plus z beta the whole square this z alpha 1 by 2 we know it is 1.96 and plus this z beta is given by 0.84. So, the whole square we need to take and divide it by p1 minus p0 whole square. The difference here is instead of substituting one prevalence, we are going to substitute two prevalence and also the freedom of substituting the precision also lost. So, this precision is decided by us, but here this is this precision is the actual difference between the two groups. Here we lost the freedom of substituting the precision and adjusting the sample size. Whenever we compare between two groups, the freedom of titrating the sample size will not be there. So, the formula for sample size calculation of two proportion is P0 Q0 plus P1 Q1 into Z alpha plus Z beta whole square divided by P1 minus P0 whole square. That there are three differences. Instead of Z alpha, Z beta also has come into play. Instead of PQ, we are summing up both P0 Q0 plus P1 Q1. And instead of D, that is the precision which we assume and we adjust the values, that freedom will be lost here. And so P1 minus P0 whole square will be substituted. So that is the sample size calculation for prevalence or proportion between two groups. So I have gone through the entire set of lectures and assignments. These are all the problems which they have mentioned in this BCBR course. To sum up, only 4, 6 and 10 chapters have the problems that is measures of disease frequency. We have seen about incidence and prevalence. Under incidence, we have seen cumulative incidence, incidence density, secondary attack rate also. Under prevalence, we have seen point prevalence and period prevalence. Under analytical study designs, that is for case control study, we have seen odds ratio. For cohort study, we have seen relative risk. Under the measurement of variables for central tendency, that is how much the values are centrally located, we have seen mean, median and mode. And for measures of dispersion, we have seen standard deviation and its formula, coefficient of variation, mean deviation and variance. For the sample size, that is the 12th chapter, sample size calculation for the studies, we have seen the formula for sample size calculation of single means and sample size calculation of single proportion and sample size calculation of proportion between two groups. I think with this, you can go to the exams with full confidence on problems. Whenever you see any numbers, don't get scared. Just apply these formulas and get it solved. If you like this video, please share it to your friends. Thanks for your continuous support. Goodbye.